Oh, hey there. I am not a native speaker. Don't kill me if I make mistakes because I, I can and I will, for sure. <laughs> because I am a disaster sometimes. So, uh, fluent forever, how to learn any language fast and never forget it. Well, we already started this book. I will keep on reading. And um, thank you for listening to to me, <laughs> even if I make the mistakes. Uh, so, how to get ridiculous words into your mouth? Yeah, so learning process is not something to do in, I don't know, one week. It's maybe, maybe a life, lifetime is not enough to learn a language. Yeah, you know, even if you are a native speaker, you can make mistakes. That's the reality. That's why I find it interesting because it's, it's all about efforts. Every day you have to make efforts to improve your pronunciation, to improve your way of learning, um, and to find it useful too, because that's a reality. If you don't find it useful, you will not use it and you will forget it. Yeah, so 40 feet, um, uh, I don't know how to say it, but um, bury it. <laughs> yeah, you will burn your knowledge and you will never see it again. And, and then it becomes the, 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 like the zombie of your, your knowledge. <laughs> I don't know, well, something, right? Uh, so, crazy stuff. So, uh, going back to the how to learn any language fast and never forget it. It's a nice book bag, but... Um, to me, it's like, it's not an excellent book, you know? Uh, yeah. So, um, so you have uh, doubtfully learning each of the uh, of your sounds. You fling open your textbook around face first into Sherman where like, oh my God, this Sherman word is like, well, I, I, I cannot pronounce it. So, now what? Each of the sounds isn't particularly hard, but how do you get your tongue to shampoo so many hops in a row? Go backward. Say the end of the word and then add one letter, one letter, um, at the, at the time until you can say the whole thing. Let's try the Russian word for flinch. As I in flinch, whenever I see the word, uh, strognu. Mm -hmm. It managed um, to string together four consonants. Oh, in a row before reaching its first vowel. Ick. We'll uh, go backward. While you may uh, have trouble saying uh, uh, you can say nu. Uh, uh, now you can add a letter uh, and practice saying gnu, gnu. Uh, once that's comfortable keep building up one letter at a time mm, makes sense yeah not all at once it's impossible yeah tongue tricks back changing is uh, incidentally uh, the cheek um, the cheat code for tongue twisters you can use it to combine words in the same way you would uh, use it for letters uh, for a real challenge uh, and show it a Czech, Czech uh, classic. Well, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, this is called back changing. Chaining. Chaining. Okay. Uh, it comes from chain, I think. And it's an old singer trick that you can work tongue-related uh, tongue miracles. Uh, 
You are using muscles, a uh, muscle memory to trick your tongue into doing things it wasn't able to do before. While your tongue can handle eight new movements at once, it can handle a single new combination of two familiar sounds. Uh, familiar sounds. Yeah. If you split long, difficult words into small, easy chunks, easy chunks, mm -hmm. um, you'll find that your tongue is capable of remarkable acrobatic feats. Whoa. Um, gymnastics, <laughs> something like that, maybe. You may wonder uh, why we are going backward. After all, uh, we could start with uh, B and process to visitor <laughs> and so on. Indeed, you can, but in my experience, it doesn't work as well. By going backward, you're, you practice the end of the word every time you add a letter. Uh, this makes uh, it easier and easier to finish the word cor uh, correctly and automa uh, automatically. Because of this, uh, you only need to focus your attention for brief moments at the very beginning age. I see. And you can let your tongue go on autopilot pilot for the rest of the world yeah so and here it comes another Sherman impossible to reach Sherman word I will not say it um, by making the end of the word and easy and familiar as possible you'll never get lost on the way there key points impressions matter Impressions matter, okay, uh, and your accent uh, makes your first impression in any language. A good accent can make your difference between a conversation that starts in French and ends in English and a full conversation in French. Good. Improve your accent uh, by learning the raw material, uh, uh, sorry, ingredients the tongue, lip, and vocal cord positions of every new sound you need. You can find that information in International Phonetic Alphabet. Okay. Interesting. Uh, if you run into difficult combinations of sounds, backchain them, backchain them together mm -hmm. until your tongue performs automatically. Train your uh, eyes. See the patterns. I have a spelling checker. It came with my PC. It plainly marks uh, for my review. Marks for my review. Means sticks. I uh, can cannot see. Oh, I I see. It's. It's not a mistake, but in purpose. Okay, well, <laughs> doesn't matter. Okay, next <laughs> paragraph, please. Uh, you know how to train your ears to hear new sounds. Well, I don't know if I know, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's keep on <laughs> reading this. And you know how to train your mouth to produce them, produce them. Okay, uh, I don't know how to train my mouth, I, I mean, I try, <laughs> but how do you know which sounds to produce? Somehow you have to connect to um, write the system of your language to your mouth and ears. Yeah, it's all connected, guys. And um, now, wait a second. Uh, what if you only want to speak? Kids learn languages without, without uh, first learning to read. 
why can't adults? Oh, we can, but it's time consuming and expensive. Kids learn languages to, by listening and watching adults for thousands upon thousands of hours. Adults, adults uh, do this uh, for free for their own ch uh, children, kids. Um, but those same adults will tend to charge you a lot of money. Um, the right of war, on the other hand, is plain, uh, plainful and free. Yeah. Even if you never intend to read a book in French, or you can get a thousand illustrated examples of every word in your language from Google Images. That is too good a resource to ignore. Uh, the problem with, uh, with um, written resources is the danger of work broken words. Oh, the tar, uh, the car, mm -hmm. is, uh, and this is, is a problem we must overcome. This challenge is different in every language because every language shows a different degree of correspondence between its spelling and pronunciation. English is one of the worst offenders when it comes to our spelling system it is legendary for its weakness um, but even english operates under a large set of dependable rules which is um why uh, you can you can predict your the, the, the pronunciation of fake words like yeah fake words okay uh, we get it <laughs> even if in Chinese a language where single characters refer uh, to whole words greater than sounds you will find that the characters often contains pronunciation uh, and uh, a feature that allows Chinese native speaker and advanced Chinese students to predict the pronunciation of new characters. Um, every language has its patterns and we make our job much easier if we can get those patterns into our heads. This task, uh, task can be a piece of cake if we know what we are doing. We are very good at internalizing patterns even a five-year-old knows that dogs are dogs and cats and cats are cats okay uh, there is only one prerequisite to learning a new pattern we need to notice to notice it when it passes by mm -hmm. so uh we can do this in many ways we could listen to recordings of every new word we read for example but um the best way to do this involves a phonetic uh alphabet alphabet so uh this is not to say that recordings aren't helpful oh okay just <laughs> it was an alarm uh, I, I think that uh, they are great and necessary. Yep. So, it's just uh, that sometimes we need to be told what uh, we are hearing before we can truly hear it. We already encountered one good uh, phonetic alphabet. Uh, alphabet. Uh, uh, so, but uh, the particular alphabet uh, is less important than the information it conveys. Oh, say, you can use bad pronounce it on sure, but sure, something like that. Uh, so, uh, if you know exactly what uh, that would sound like in French person's mouth, we're looking for a way to see what you're hearing unequally important 
what we are not hearing. <laughs> so, sounds, sound clues in Chinese. Oh, Chinese, the hardest language. Oh, it's impossible. Something like that. So, I am afraid I, I can't do this. I, I hate those people, you know? Everything is possible, guys. Uh, more than um, 80%, okay. More than 80% of Chinese words contain phonetic clues. Cool, so, uh, your ears, use it well, yeah. Uh, for example, character Mu, or I don't know how to pronounce it really, to wash oneself. Contains a little character for a tree with the form of the tree, you know, symbol. Because you know it's symbolic. Kanjis are symbolic, okay? As you get a feel for the basic Chinese characters, you will be able to guess as the pronunciation of the new character reasonably well. Reasonably well, okay. Mm hmm so so uh-huh our eyes um our eyes are a powerful source of input if we aren't careful uh they can trick our ears into a state of inattention and inattention can prevent us from learning the patterns we need. Uh, I once showed a friend uh, one of my digital flashcards for French. I had a picture of a cat yeah. um, with the word uh, le chat. Mm -hmm. Chat, c'est en français. Mm -hmm. Underneath, and it played a recording. recording of the word so uh -huh. I run into the problem a lot with my English students it's ter terribly difficult to get a student to say uh, listen uh-huh when he see the, the, the word like listen <laughs> well okay listen uh, this problem vanishes as soon uh, as teach them a phonetic alphabet. Uh, no one, no one pronounces the T in listen. So, you get it, right? When I learn a language, I tend to use a combination of recordings and uh, phonetic alphabet, um, at least until the little Frenchman in my head starts. Uh, well. Uh, French woman in my case. In my head starts sounding very French. Ah, I see. Then I stop. I sound like an American. <laughs> Not a British, a British girl. But uh, you know, if I want, I can sound like a British. But now I am just thinking American English. Uh, then I stop uh, with recordings and rely on my phonetic alphabet. If my language is very friendly, phonetically, phonetically speaking, I will face uh, out my phonetic alphabet once I'm feeling overconfident about my pronunciation. Do you need to learn a new phonetic alphabet? Not really, specifically if your language has relatively simple and strict Spelling rules like Spanish and or Hungarian. Okay, cool. You can rely upon recordings instead. Okay, but even for those languages, uh, phonetic alphabets can make your job easier in two ways. It helps you to see and hear whenever a sound rule shows up. When you are reading uh, but uh, saying, well, I don't know, I, I don't know this word, uh, and, and it gives you uh, one more way to look at the same information because of the quirky nature of memory. Quirky nature of memory, okay. This makes your task easier, 
by learning more you will work less less okay more is less the learning paradox on the surface surface it seems you have a lot to do you are building connections between your ears your mouth spelling and uh, phonetic alphabet uh, i promise you an easy fast learning method and oh well i i am afraid when they they start saying that easy fast learning method is like <sighs> so much mystic there it's like i don't know yeah i don't know how to say it it's fake but maybe it's not that fake maybe i just don't trust because i see that so many books talk like that and then well it doesn't have sen uh, any sense uh, it doesn't has any sense yeah uh, but i i don't know well let's give it an opportunity uh, and have given uh, you a giant pile of new things to learn instead of ru who to pronounce uh, to pr uh, in french well street you know la rue mm -hmm. i'm giving you this so pronunciation blah blah interesting but you can look that well you can just check this book to see this so uh, we haven't even gotten to the street part what the hell I, I i like when they say that what the hell um i'm doing this on purpose and here's why the more you can learn about something the easier time you will have mastering it and the less time you will need over the long term if you are trying to make the foreign sounds of your new language familiar uh, then your e uh, easiest shortest path is to learn as much as you possibly can about those sounds this phenomenon phenomenon shows up in every subject as a kid i loved math oh uh, well i don't <laughs> okay yeah I, I think math is great but it was a headache for me <laughs> yeah uh, it has this neat uh, quality because everything was connected yeah everything is connected you memorize that three of um, uh, multiplies four uh three times four yeah i don't know what to say is 12. and then you learn that four times three is 12. <sighs> and eventually you start realizing that you can switch the order of any two numbers you are multiplying okay yeah of course so what is the point about this that pattern changes and becomes more subtle and nonset nonset uh with every little fact you learn soon you begin to see the connections between multiplication and division and multiplications and exponents and multiplications and fractions eventually uh, your giant floating pattern of uh, multiplication becomes a par part of the bigger floating pattern universe of math as long as i could connect to every new thing i learned to this universe i had an easy time with math okay and i noticed that classmates uh who had problems with math uh me for example <laughs> weren't struggling with math they were struggling with connections yeah that's right when you get it once you will get it for sure forever <laughs> that's true <laughs> it, it happened to me at least uh, they were trying to memorize equations, but no one had successfully shown them how those equations connect with everything they had already learned. 
Yeah, of course. At some point along their path, their interconnected math universe we, uh, had shattered into fragments and they were trying to learn each piece in isolation, an extremely difficult proposition. Uh, who could possibly remember the formula for the volume of a um, hexagonal prism? How could you make yourself care enough to actually remember? It was so much easier if you could see how all the pieces interrelated, how multiplication is connected with the area of rectangles, uh, rectangles uh, how the area of rectangles is connected with triangles and trapezoids, and how the volume of prisms connected back with multiplication. I didn't have to memorize formula. Uh, they were just examples of something much, much larger. Yeah, that's true. Oh, it's true, it's true. I, I agree. <laughs> Math can be hard for the same reason that languages can be hard. At some point, you miss a connection, and if you know, if you, if no one goes back, takes you by the hand, and shows you that connection, then you're suddenly dumped to memorize crappy formula. Yeah, let's try. It's right. So. We know why this is so. We have already discussed the nature of memory. Every time we can connect two memories, we frighten both of them. Neurons that fire together, uh, wire together. If you learn that the uh, mer, e, e, mer, sounds like e, e, okay. Uh, you build one connection. Ah, yeah, I love connections. If you then learn le milk, le, uh, yeah, you will build three connections. E connects with le, connects with mer, and le connects with mer. Uh, these three connections are much easier to remember than your original E. By adding more pieces of learning, of learn, um, to learn, pieces to learn, uh, you are making your job much easier. You are learning faster, which means less work over time. Naturally, there, there are limits. Oh, that is the... the, the the sad part of the things. A bit Uh There is an art of to build to building memories. It takes balance. You could spend days learning tri tri trivia about a, uh, and it won't natural necessarily help you learn French. On the other hand, if you skipped skip it uh, and simply told you to learn a bunch of French words, you be back in math class, memorizing formula, um, how can you determine where more is less and where more is just more? The key is relevance. If you see something as useful, then it's worth learning. If not, then not. Okay, to be or not to be, something like that. Uh huh. So, key points. That's it. Every language contains a pattern of connections between uh, its spelling and its sounds. Yeah, you need to speak in order to learn a language. If you can internalize that pattern and make it automatic, uh, you will save yourself a great deal of work. The easiest way to internalize those patterns is to use your SRS. Okay, the key is the SRS. Go for it. Uh, create flashcards to memorize every spelling pattern you need. 
In the process, approach for gain sounds and complex patterns from as many angles as you can, from their spellings to their sounds, even down to the individual mouth, mouth position, mouth, mouth positions used used for each sound. So. You are taking advantage of one of the stranger quirks of learning. The more bits and pieces you learn, the less work it takes to learn them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so... Useful, right? Well, at least I find it useful. Okay, bye guys.